So in this video, we're going to talk about how to describe the effects of parameters on the log function. So remember that logarithmic functions have the form f of x equals the log base b of x. Let's look at the function f of x equals the log of x, which is the common log, where b equals 10 to study the effects of transformations. So remember, when we talk about transformations, we're talking about three types. We're talking about shifts, which are translations left or right or up or down, stretches and compressions, and reflections. So if we look at the function f of x equals a log bx minus h plus k, we can describe the transformations. Remember, any number that's on the outside of the log is going to be a vertical transformation. Any number that is on the inside of the log is going to be a horizontal transformation. If we are multiplying the number, it's going to be a stretch or a compression. If we're multiplying a number that's less than 1, that's going to be a reflection. Addition or subtraction is going to be a translation. So let's see what happens. If we change the value of a so that it's bigger than 1, notice that the graph in blue is vertically stretched compared to the parent function in black. When we make a less than 1, the graph in green is vertically compressed. If we change the value of b so that it's bigger than 1, the graph in blue is horizontally compressed, right? That's why it looks taller. If we change it to a b value that is less than 1, the graph is horizontally stretched like the graph in green. We can shift the graph horizontally left or right. Remember, if it looks like a plus sign inside our log, that is going to be shifted to the left. So if we have the log of x plus 4, which is the graph in blue, it's shifted 4 units to the left. If we have a minus sign inside the log, it's going to be shifted to the right. So the green graph, the log of x minus 5, is shifted to the right. So we also have vertical shifts up or down. So that depends on the value of k. So if k is a number that's bigger than 0, the graph is going to go up like the graph in blue, right? So that's the log of x plus 5. If k is less than 0, the graph is going to go down. If we have the log of x minus 3, which is the graph in green, you can see it's shifted down from the parent function. We also have reflections. If the value of a, the number in front, if that's less than 0, the graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis, okay? Because that's a vertical reflection. If the value of b, which is inside the log, is less than 0, the graph is going to be reflected over the y-axis because that's a horizontal reflection. So let's look at an example. Let's describe how g of x differs from f of x. So we have the parent function f of x equals the log of x, and we have g of x, which is 3 log of x plus 2. So let's figure out how that 3 and how that plus 2 are going to affect our graph. So notice that that 3 is a value of a. Right, So that value of a is in front, and it tells us if the absolute value of a is bigger than 1, that is going to be a vertical stretch. Okay, So that 3 is going to vertically stretch our graph. And then we have that plus 2. The plus 2 is a value of h. Right, So in order to get that to be a plus sign, that h has to be less than 0, which is why we have that plus sign in our problem. So that is going to shift it to the left 2 units. Okay, so this graph is going to be vertically stretched and shifted to the left too. Remember that you can graph both of these functions in Desmos to verify this transformation. Now let's describe how f of x equals the ln of x compares to g of x equals negative ln x plus 2. So notice the new things we have. We have that negative, right? That's basically like a negative 1 in front. So we have that negative 1 in front and we have a plus 2. So that negative in front, that is a value of a. Okay, so notice that when a is less than 0, we have a reflection over the x-axis. We don't have a stretch or a compression because to have a stretch or a compression, that a value has to be less than 1 or bigger than 1. It doesn't matter if it's equal to 1, right? If it's equal to 1, there's no change. So we just have a reflection over the x-axis, and then we have a plus 2, which is a value of h. Okay, so it tells us if we have a plus sign, then we're going to be shifting to the left, so this is going to shift the graph to the left two units. So you can describe transformations of logarithmic functions by comparing the equation of the transform function to the parent function, which has the form f of x equals the log base b of x.